Okay, we're back. Part four. Here we go. Then shake them and put them into the belt with me. Okay. Yeah. Do you know how often, or should I say, when did you guys put the ammo in the bandoliers? Um, a lot of them already had it in there. So let me get this straight. A lot of the bandoliers were already loaded. We don't know where those rounds are, how they got in there. And you and Sarah needed help from Nicole to load the bandoliers. Did I get that straight? Because I'm confused. How many bandoliers are we talking about? How many rounds are we talking about? If those rounds are in there, where do they come from? Who put them in there? They're, the bandoliers aren't emptied every night to account for the rounds. Do you load them once and they stay loaded for the whole scene? Are we going to find out the answers? Stay tuned. Will we find out the answers? I doubt it. So from the last Nick Cage set and everything. So still check those ones out and everything. But we, of course, had a couple more that we had to like switch around and everything. So mostly the whole first week we were switching them around. And mostly switching sometimes. Seth did it. What the? And then after that, we did have a couple more characters come in with different, you know, waist sizes. So we would have to like put them in other belts too. So some of these belts already have rounds in them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do you remember which ones? No. Where did the rounds come from? Who loaded them? Why is that normal? Did that happen on your last movie? Is this the only time you've seen this? Did your dad ever give you training that this is normal? None of these questions are being asked. Mostly, yeah, they mostly got switched around a lot. Mostly, here we go again. Sometimes, normally. Uh, and a lot of them fell out <coughs> pretty regularly out of the, rounds the in them. Yeah, the dummy rounds would fall out sometimes just because when they're riding the horses, they jiggle out. Okay. Um, so you regularly have to put more in them. So since some of this ammo came from another production, was the ammo in those belts ever checked? Yeah. So you had physically removed them from the belts? Yeah. And checked them? Yes. She's lying. There's no way she did that. She should have asked that question a little different. If she'd have asked, where did that ammo come from? How did it get in there? Who brought it? She she could have locked her down before she asked this question. She asked the question, so now she can lie and go, oh, yeah, we pulled out. Who thinks, raise your hand, if you think this lazy, incompetent person that needs two people to help her load bandoliers actually checked every round and other bandoliers that had rounds? There ain't no damn way in hell you'll ever convince me that she was meticulous and pulled out every round of every bandolier that she didn't load and checked. Ain't no fucking way. Okay. And who all did the checking? That was me. That was involved in the two boxes that I did. At the beginning? Yes. So well, now we're talking about two boxes. Wait a minute. You just said some of them already had rounds in it. How did they get in there? Where did they come from? We don't know. We'll never know. All right. Um, so when ammo's not being used, then does it ever go back in a box? Does it stay? When ammo's not being used, um, if it's about to be used, it's there on the bottom of the cart. Like if we're going to get into it later that day, we don't really have time to run back to the truck. So we usually keep it right there if we're shooting that day. If we're not shooting that day, it doesn't really come on set. I'll usually bring like maybe a box of quarter loads. I usually maybe. Just in case they randomly decide that they want to shoot something because they'll change their minds last minute and then you have to be prepared for that. Who's they? Um, Finally, she asked who they were. This woman has said they, them, sometime. And those ho in Finally. She asks, who's they? Jesus Christ. Give that freaking cop a donut. She's going to be the star interviewer now. Directors, actors, whoever just like feels like, mm, maybe I should be shooting right now, kind of. Okay. So when you go to unload. Wait a minute. I'm not leaving this. This is a freaking bone for me. 
So you are you telling me that anytime an actor or the director or anybody wants to shoot a gun, they tell you to give them a load and you give it to them? I'd like to know that. Or is that what you're telling me? I don't believe that's true because I think they have to warn people. They have to get on the radio. There's a lot of things. She made it sound like anybody can ask for a gun anytime with blanks and just decide to shoot it. I don't believe that. She's full of shit. But uh, my opinion. The valves or the guns, anything of the sort, um, does it go back in a box? The belt? The like we, we don't ever take... Once they're once the the dummies are on the belt, they stay on the belt, and the belts just get hung in the prop truck. Okay. Like yeah, and then uh, for the guns and everything, yeah, we take all the dummies out if it's dummied up. So if the belts are hanging after they're loaded overnight, the next day do you recheck the ammo? She's gonna say no. Why not? Everybody has access. If you're not gonna recheck it, why did you check it the first time? You said you check every round, but then you leave it unsecure, hanging on a thing in a truck that's not secure, and the next day, you don't recheck it. That's how you back people down and make them look like they're freaking incompetent and they're not doing things consistently. If you had a real investigator, because we have play investigators that were hired because of what bathroom they use, eh, we'll never know. And then, of course, we take the blanks out, too. And, but where do they go? They go back in a box. Okay. Or sometimes the dummies, they'll go on the cart, on the top of the cart. Okay. So Sometimes in the box, sometimes on top of the cart. What do you mean on top of the cart? In another box on top of the cart, or are they just loose, rolling around, so they get kicked off, so anybody can come by and pick them up and play with them? So anybody could throw a live round on the cart and it would mix in with a bunch of other loose rounds. Is that what you're telling me? Why don't we have these answers? Oh, so would you say that ammo's ever mixed? The dummies and the blanks? Or just, you know, various kinds of dummies? Well, v various kinds of dummies, yeah. Like I told you all, dummies are kind of weird and individual in their own way, pretty much. Um, so, yeah, they were mixed pretty regularly. Okay. So it's not like, you know, I say, hey, I take these rounds out of here and they have to go back in that specific box because these are... No, they just go in a dummy box. Okay. In a box of dummies. Um, so our actors are, or crew members on set, are they um, advised to self-inspect weapons? Uh, I'm not really sure. I Well, most of the time when they tell me, like I'll go up to them and I'm like, here, and I show them it's clear, they'll be like, it's okay, I trust you. I say, don't trust me. You know, go ahead and always check for yourself. Okay. But um, but yeah, are they not required to self check. No, not really. Okay. But I do, I do show them them every time before I hand them off to them. Wait a minute, that's that's inconsistent. If you show them every time you hand them off to them, how did Alex get a gun from the assistant director and you didn't show him? Well, I normally sometimes. I'll, this girl is not being locked down on any of her vague bullshit answers because this interview is being conducted like a freaking idiot interview. All right. Um, Show them that the gun's clear. Have you seen any of them do their own safety checks? Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Jensen does his own safety checks. Uh, Travis does his own safety checks. Travis ML. Um, uh Devin was getting into doing his own safety checks because I taught him how to do it. So he was kind of getting better at that. Uh, what did they do to do these checks? Pull the hammer back to half cock, spin it around and close it. Okay. Yeah. That's not a safety check. Okay. When she says pull the hammer back halfway and spin it, on these single action revolvers, the cylinder is locked when the hammer is forward. So the only way to spin the cylinder is you have to cock the hammer back halfway and it stops. And then it allows the cylinder to spin. If they're just pulling the hammer back and spinning the cylinder, they're not pulling out the rounds, making sure it's a dummy, listening for the BB, inspecting it. That's not a self-check. She's calling a self-check and I would be locking her down. Wait a minute. You just told me a self-check that the actors do. Your definition of a self-check is half cock spinning to see if there's a round in every chamber. 
Is that your definition of self-check? She would have said, yes. And then I would have said, so they don't do a safety check. They don't check individual rounds. They don't ensure it's loaded with blanks. They don't do that. No, they don't. That's what she would have said. Now, I kind of believe that's probably what happened, but I don't have her saying it. Yeah, so not pulling it, rounds out, checking them themselves. No, not really. See, not really. What do you mean, not really? Have you seen actors do that? And have you seen actors not do that? What does not really mean? Okay. Um, has it ever been common practice for actors to do? I'm not really too sure. What about on your last production? Did they ever do their own? Uh, Nick Cage definitely did not. Uh, he barely really cared to train with the gun at all. Um, a lot of actors sometimes will barely care to train with the gun at all and think that they'll just do it on the day. Um, and, but yeah, no, not a lot of them take it out and check them. Something that hasn't been brought up a lot is because there, everything has kind of been on her dad's shoulders, her dad's experience. He's the great teacher. He taught her everything she doesn't know or know. Nowhere in here has it been, has your dad ever told you a procedure? When your dad was working, did he ever say actors should or shouldn't? How does he do it when he did it since he trained you? She would probably say, I don't know. We never really talked about it. Great. So now when dad gets on a stand later and says, I trained my daughter and she knows. Now we have her saying, he didn't train me. But we don't have that. And we'll never have it. Why? Well, whatever. Um, okay. Um, when you or somebody gives a gun to an actor, um, do you tell them, like, hey, these are the rounds that are in this gun? Like, do you tell them it's hot or cold? And then what kind of ammo is in the gun? How about you ask, when you hand a gun to an actor, do you say anything? What do you say? What are the different things you can say? Um, I'm sorry, can you repeat that question? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So I, yeah, I don't I don't blame her for repeating it. It was a bullshit question. I tell them I tell them, all right, so this is a clear gun if there's no dummies in it, right? If it's dummied up, I show them and I say this is dummied up and usually I have the dummies that have no primer cap in there. So I'll show them that. And then if it's hot, I'll tell them it's hot and I'll tell them four quarter loads or four eighth loads or whatever is in the gun. Yeah. Okay. And I let them know exactly how many is in there. And I put it exactly to where they'll shoot it and it'll go for that time. Okay. Have you ever allowed access um, to anyone for any of these firearms? No. Bad question. Have you ever allowed access to any one of these farms? That's not true. You allow Sarah, right? She's your assistant. You said you had that other lady helping you. See, that, that was a bad question. I would say, who has access to the weapons? Give me everybody that has access. Then when she says it. Has anyone else ever had access? Has there ever been a friend, a friend of an actor, a child, the security guard? Do you ever show the gun to anybody but the people that you just told me has access to the guns? That was a bad question. Inexperience. Like for... Using them on set or for any purpose, uh, well, I allow the outside of what their scope was. No, um, when she said no, it ought to be a follow up. So, you're telling me an actor that doesn't work with guns has never come over and wanted to look and ask to see or ask you to show them anything? I guarantee you that's happened. That answer is bullshit because the question was bullshit, like after hours during lunch. No. You know, days that you guys weren't. No, we, me, Nicole, and Sarah ate lunch together pretty regularly. And pretty much every Again, with pretty regularly. What's pretty regularly? Every day? How many days? How many days did you not eat? Do you remember? Again, we're letting these vague terms just get thrown around. Every day, except for a couple of days where I would sit at another table or converse with some other people. But yeah, we all went to lunch together. We all locked them up every day at lunch and we all locked them up every night. 
And I definitely didn't go to work on my weekends because why would I do that? You know, right. I want to be there as least as possible. What? That's the most honest thing she said. She wants to be there as least as possible. She is a lazy, incompetent person in everything she does. And this is just my opinion. You can say I'm being mean to her. Her demeanor and everything, her raising, she's had everything handed to her. She's never had to work or earn. She doesn't have to apply for a job. People just text her freaking job. She gets paid. I mean, that's the most honest thing this girl has said. I want to be there as least as possible, which means when you're there, you don't care, which is why someone's dead on your watch. And she doesn't even take responsibility for it. She doesn't even think she's to blame. She has no responsibility for this dead person. Her big thing when she came in here about how she doing is people online was giving her hair about her color of her hair, so she changed her color. That was her big issue. No responsibility for anything and probably her entire life. <laughs> don't we all? Yeah. So. And, and look at this girl. Don't we all? When I was working as a cop, I liked to go to work. I got paid. I did a job. I enjoyed my job. I did it well. This girl, cop, homicide investigation, someone's dead, and she's laughing. Yeah, I know how you, I know what you mean. I don't want to be here either. Perfect. You got an idiot interview, an idiot for a homicide investigation. Oh, yeah. Last weekend, I wasn't. I was in Denver the first weekend, actually. So, okay. yeah. And then the other one, I was just relaxing at my hotel. Okay. Um, did you spend any time with anybody on the weekend? Yeah, I spent some time uh, with the nice boy at the front desk at my hotel. He was nice. Um, I hung out with some crew members. We went bowling one time. And other than that, I didn't really hang out with people outside of set too much. And I kind of went and did my own. I'm not sure the purpose of this question. Usually I can tell why a question is being asked. I'm not sure why this question. Unless they know that she brought a friend and showed them the guns and they haven't told her yet. Which since the interview is about over, I don't think that's the case. But maybe. I don't think in Denver the week before. We haven't really been there that long. Okay. Um, did you go out... Did you go out um, with the crew one night too? I think they said like oh, some brewery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We went to the brewery downtown after bowling. Okay, so that's where she was going with this interview. I don't know where this is going and why the beer is important, but again, normally I can figure out why the question, how does this pertinent, unless you know something, you're trying to see if she's going to tell you. So she said, I didn't hang out with the crew a whole bunch, and she knows she went to a brewery, a brewery with them. I don't know how this is relevant, but maybe we'll see. After bowling? Yeah. Okay. And that was on a day off, though? Yeah. Did you have work the next day? No. That was uh, Monday. We worked. Maybe she's going at the angle she went out drinking and had to work the next day. Maybe that was the angle she's approaching. I still don't know. We, we had Monday, Tuesday off. Okay. Do you remember which Monday it was? It was the last Monday before the incident. So the 20th was the incident, I believe, on Wednesday? 21st. 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 So the 11th? The Monday. Remember that attorney's getting paid probably two or three hundred, maybe four or five hundred dollars an hour for sitting there taking notes. Columbus Day is a holiday. He's probably still pissed off they were talking about all their hair when he ain't got none. Rick, you can't whatever. So would that be the no. 18th? The yeah, it would be the it would be the eighteenth. Okay, so you're off that Monday and Tuesday. Yeah, and then we're back. Hopefully. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, have you yourself, and not just on this set, but have you ever um, encountered a defective blank or a defective dummy? Yeah. So, you know, I've had a couple. Of this girl knows the question before the detective can even get it out because she don't even know how to ask it. She's like finishing the question and answering it before she finishes asking blanks that haven't gone off, you know, but usually that's because the actor doesn't pull the hammer all the way back, and so it'll just be at half cock and Wow, this interview ended quickly. Uh, I don't know why it ended so quickly, but part four, 20 minutes, uh, 
I'll try and find this the second part. All right, we'll end it here, part four.